As their site says, SAS gives CSS superpowers, but in doing so, it also adds an extra layer of complexity and abstraction to our projects. Some argue that it's over the top and we don't need it, especially with all the modern CSS tools that are available to us now. If you've been paying attention to my content lately, you can probably tell that I still like SAS even with all this complication and abstraction. And in this video, I'm hoping I can get a few people who dismiss SAS to start at least thinking that it might be worth checking out. Hi there, if you are new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials. And lately I have been exploring SAS a whole heck of a lot. I really do love it. And one of the reasons I love it so very much is you don't have to go all in with SAS. And Yes, there is an added complexity to it for sure. 100%, I'm never gonna say there isn't. And if you watch some of my advanced videos where I dive deep into SAS, some of it can seem really complicated for sure. And I'm never gonna take that away from anybody because I remember first seeing that stuff and just being left dumbfounded. But I love that you don't have to go all in with it. This isn't like something like TypeScript that sort of forces you into a certain paradigm and a certain way of working. With SAS, you can add the little pieces that you want and not use any of the other stuff. So if you don't like the idea of abstracting things with big loops and other stuff like that, you can still keep things simple. And maybe you really like the idea of partials and the partials with organizing all your files separately to stay a little bit more organized. That for you is perfect. That's the only thing you want. Well, you can use SAS and only do that and do nothing else. Then, you know, maybe you're doing that. You're using your partials all the time and you decide, you know what, I've seen a few people using a few mix-ins that look really cool. I'm going to start trying those out. And you can start, let's just add a few mix-ins to my, my projects that I'm working on and seeing if I like them. And if you do like them, then you keep on using them. And if you don't like them, then you stop using them. Um, and you can sort of pick and choose the parts of SAS that you like the most and you can start and I always encourage people to start with the simplest things and as they become more comfortable with those, you can start sort of digging in a little bit deeper as you go. Another thing with SAS is it doesn't have to be totally abstract. And 100% if you do a loop that takes say six lines of SAS and turns it into 200 lines of CSS, there's a lot of abstraction going on there. And when you look at that initial block of code, it can be really hard to tell what's actually going on. And if you don't like that, that's completely fine. As I said, you don't have to use it. And you can stick to the parts of SAS that don't dive deep into abstraction. Even things like nesting, there's a lot of people who don't necessarily like nesting, especially with the ampersand uh, parent selector that's available. I think it's really handy, but I do understand that it can make it a lot harder to search through files. If you're doing a find to look for a certain class, you might not be able to find it depending on how you've set up your nesting. And that, you know, for some people, that's a deal breaker right there. But you don't have to do that. You don't have to use those levels of abstraction if you don't like them. You can pick and choose those parts that you find are very obvious and very clear and just stick with those and use only those ones. That said, a lot of the abstraction comes from the parts that you don't actually write all the time. So sometimes you're looking at them and you're like, oh my goodness, what does this do? Uh, these are the types of things that you're often creating and then you can reuse from one project to the next. So I had one video where I looked at how you can use uh, a few loops that loop through a SAS map and that map outputs a ton of custom properties, a ton of utility classes, and for me is super handy. Even when I went to make that tutorial, I hadn't created that loop in a while. I had to go back over it and remember how I did it and what everything it was doing uh, just because I created it once and then I just use it every project one after the other. And that means like, I just do what I need to and everything happens and I know what's happening because I use it every single project. So sometimes when you're looking at it going like you're getting a little bit lost in the weeds with that abstraction that can be happening, it is on the more reusable things, at least in my experience. And sometimes you do need to create something custom for a certain project. But I think it is important to know that you're not diving into that every single project and having to dive into the weeds to get it working. Uh, you should be able to understand it if you're using it 100%. So don't, don't get me wrong there. What I mean is like you, you don't necessarily need to be able to retype that exactly every single time. You should be able to look at it and understand what it's doing uh, just in case you need to make a modification or you need to tweak it a little bit. But it's not one of those things that you need to be able to write and create every single time. And because of that, I do think it increases the importance of comments and documentation. Those become even more important than they might have before because with good comments and documentation on what different parts are doing, you strip away that abstraction. You explain what this is for, it does take a little bit of time to do, but imagine you write a really nice piece of documentation in the comments. You, you layer out everything that's happening in this block of code that's kind of confusing. And in that, you read the comment, you make those links, you can make the tweaks really easily. You don't have to memorize everything that's happening. You can come back to that six months later and go, you know, you're not trying to like figure it out and make the little tweak. You're not lost in there. You're reading that comments and that documentation. 
And as much as, well, you know, you're going, well, I don't want to have to comment and document, but you should be anyway. So whether you're doing it for simple CSS or more complicated things, comments and documentation are really important to being a developer. And if you're able to do that really well, it's another skill that you're developing along the way. And a lot of people are really going to appreciate it when you're working in teams anyway. Now, one complaint I do hear a lot of is maybe SaaS is great for really big projects. When you're a big team of people, you're working on this big enterprise level thing, and there's a lot of complexity in the project. So SaaS makes that easier and makes things faster. But on small projects, we don't need SaaS. You know, what do we need it for? We have everything I need at my disposal. And 100%, I, you know, on a smaller project, sometimes a lot of the things that you see don't seem to be as valuable because there's less to do. But I think one of the problems that comes up when people are watching some of the videos, when you're setting up mixins, when you're setting up these complex loops and doing other things like that, is you're thinking that you're doing that every single project, but I'm not doing that. I have my set of mixins that yes, I created them once and yes, I go in and I tweak them and I have my loops that I put a whole bunch of stuff, but I have all of that. So when I start a small project or a big project, I'm not starting from scratch and rewriting those every time. Uh, if I were doing that, then the setup and going through all that hassle, that would take a long time for a really small project and it probably or potentially wouldn't be worth it. But when I have those at my disposal for big or small projects and I can just dive in, make those little changes and it just comes and works. And you know, that big loop that I was talking about before that outputs my custom properties and my utility classes, I love that so much. I use it no matter how small or how big my project because it saves me time. <laughs> it just, it's so much easier for me. And because I'm also used to working that way now, it also helps that it outputs things in a way that I like to work. So it, for me, it's absolutely fantastic. And it definitely, even on really small projects, it saves me a lot of time. I mean, just even if you don't want to do that, even if you don't want to dive in and have all of these things that you're using all the time, just having simple mix-ins that you can use, like really basic ones that just do a little thing that make your life a little bit easier, they can be so handy, or just nesting media queries. Like if you were to say, Kevin, you can have nothing from SAS is dead. We're, 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 we're deprecating it. You can never use it again, but you're allowed to take one thing and bring it from SAS into CSS. That one thing I would take would be nesting media queries. It is such a time saver and life saver. And I find it makes it so much easier to stay organized that like right away, that is the, the one thing I would grab for sure to bring over to native CSS. I love it so very much. So it doesn't matter if it's a big project or a small project. I really do like having SaaS and I really do feel like it does save me time either way. And I will finish all of this up by saying it isn't for everyone and that's cool too. Uh, just because I really like it because I think it saves me a lot of time and I think that a lot of people could benefit by at least trying it out. Uh, I'm not saying you have to use it, but I think Trying it out before you bash it is always a good thing, but I totally get if it's not what you want to do right now. You might have other priorities on what you're trying to learn right now. Uh, you know, if you're learning JavaScript and you don't want to devote to that, that's completely fine. Or if it's just something that you look at and every time it makes you cringe and it's really not for you, then it's not for you. you know? uh, that's one of the beautiful things about web development is we don't all have to do the same thing. There's lots of different approaches, different ways of working, and just basing on the core skills of HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript, there's never going to be anything wrong with that. That said, if you haven't tried SAS yet, but I've at least convinced you to give it a go, I'd suggest starting with this video right here. It's just a quick look at how you can get started with it. Or if you want some more advanced SAS content, there are links down in the description as well. And with that, a big thank you to my enabler of awesome, Zach, and all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.